Hi, I'm Takani, and you can't see me because I'm invisible. Today we're going to be talking about home inspectors. I am not an inspector, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. My opinion doesn't matter. Our story kicks off with an article written by Solar Boy and posted to Electric Dramatic. He alleges that he had taken down the previous article and decided to republish it when his channel got a bunch of copyright strikes from a certain sci-fi home inspector. Now, I don't know if his channel actually got copyright striked or taken down, but uh, if it did, you know, not my channel next, please. Thank you. <laughs> Everything I say in this video is alleged, and all the opinions said in this video are based on things I found publicly on everybody's TikTok pages or through this article. I have a list of a bunch of sources in the description, so feel free to go through those if you want to investigate this yourself. But I have 33 pages to get through, so let's dive right into it. Chapter 1 Code 312.5C A TikTok user named Brandon posted a video showing off his wire management in his meter socket. Obviously, I'll put the photo somewhere up here, but as you can see on this lower bottom part, those wires are not secure. And this is important. As you see, after he posted that video, someone named Paul, who after a little bit of digging I discovered is the literal founder of the Electric Code Academy, decided to stitch Brandon's video and say, wow, your wires sure do look pretty, but you're violating code 312.5C. Just saying. If you're wondering what code 312.5C is, it states, cables have to be securely connected to the meter socket box. And as you can see from this photo at the bottom here, those cables are not securely connected. In fact, when they show a later video of this, the wires are just like shoved in there at the end. It's, it's kind of strange. I, I don't know why they showed that, honestly, especially as showing that just kind of proved that they weren't secure. But OK, well, we'll get to it. <laughs> you see, code 312.5C is a basic safety code. You want your wires secure. It's like number one electrical wire coding school. I did a little bit of research in the code because I wanted to see if it applied to where they were. And it does in fact apply to where they are in Arizona. According to the National Fire Protection Association, all 50 states are up to, at the oldest, 2008's National Electric Code. And the code that was mentioned, 312.5c, was added in 1975. So. Doing some minor big brain calculations, 1975 is before 2008. Therefore, all the states follow code 312.5c. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm bringing this up. Well, you see, after Paul shared his video, rightly pointing out that there was a code violation of 312.5c, Sai decided to stitch that, defending his friend. Sai makes some comments mocking Paul, saying that he should be an educator. And he is an educator. He shouldn't be insulting other people's wires. And then he goes on this rant about how he should be focusing on larger code violations, more problematic code violations, not code violation 312.5c. Now, here's the thing. I think all codes should be followed. I think that's like the point of codes. But what do I know? I feel like the National Electric Codes especially should be filed, considering they uh, deal with electrics. Sai then goes on to state that this doesn't qualify for him and his buddy. Brandon has to violate code 312.5c, which I thought was kind of strange too. No, he does not. He does not have to violate any codes, especially ones that are so important like the electric codes, the National Electric Codes. But as you know from my earlier research, it does in fact qualify, because Sai is in the United States. And even if Arizona was on the oldest uh, 2008 National Electric Code, it still is relevant. Well, after Sai decided to stitch and call out Paul, Paul was feeling a little bit petty. So Paul decided to go through all of Sai's videos and point out tons of violations. An example of one of his many stitches is the Counter Island fiasco. You see, Sai inspected a home, and as he was inspecting the home, he noticed that there were no receptacles in the island, which I believe a receptacle is like an outlet. And he's like, well, you know, there doesn't need to be receptacles on the island. 
And he said, quote, it's no longer required to have a receptacle at the kitchen island. So Paul decided to stitch the video and Paul said that Psy was opposed to Arizona adopting the 2023 National Electric Code, which is the literal code that has the amendment to allow islands to not have receptacles. Allegedly, Paul was really into pushing to not have that amendment. So if he was pushing against that amendment and he says that Arizona isn't following it, it would be right to assume that receptacles are required on Kitchen Islands in Arizona. Sai should have reported that Kitchen Island because, according to Paul, it was, in fact, not up to code, in my opinion, as someone who has to Google how to flip a breaker. But things get worse. Chapter 2. Debunking, Doxing, and Diapers in the By Psy, The Disgrace of Psy Porter article, Solar Boy shares some messages between him and another inspector called Angry Sparky. Basically, the gist of the conversation is that Psy does know that Paul is the founder of the Electric Code Academy. But that didn't stop him from stitching and trying to claim that Paul was wrong on a bunch of things. Apparently, Angry told Psy to ask Paul why... Code 312.5C was allowed. I don't really understand why he would ask why it was allowed because it doesn't seem like it was allowed by Paul's response. Before Paul went on his rampage, Angry told Sai that he should take the video down. And then he alleges that Sai just wants the drama. Another inspector called the Bearded Expect ins Expector. <laughs> the Bearded Inspector decides to join the party and whips out his 2020 National Electric Code book. He opens the page to Article 312.5, and one by one, he reads off all the exceptions. And then he points out that every single exception didn't apply. The Bearded Inspector then says that, sure, the wires did look really pretty, but Paul was right. They are not up to code. Paul was 100% correct. The article alleges that Psy accused Paul, the founder of the Electric Code Academy, of making a mistake and saying something is up to code when it's actually not. But that doesn't matter. Solar Boy says that Paul was right again. And with the previous code, Paul was also right. So I think Paul might be right. Solar Boy explains the code violation that Paul called out, and he showed that it was up to code per the National Electric Code 210.11C3 exception. Solar Boy goes on in his article alleging that Psy is trying to ruin Paul's reputation. And then the angry Sparky decided to get back in the mix. I mean, he was already in the article, so he might as well. He posted a video researching and explaining code 312.5C in excruciating detail. And then he goes on to say, yes, there is an exception to code 312.5C, but that's in Oro Valley, Arizona, which is allegedly not where Psy is. In response to Angry Sparky siding with Paul, Psy decided to get a bunch of Paul stickers and then put them on a diaper and throw them away while saying that he learned who his true friends are. And he's been immature and he'll do better. Which I thought was really funny that after throwing away his friend's stickers on a diaper, he's like, I was immature. I'll do better. It's like, you just, what? <laughs> you can't do something immature and then apologize while you're doing something immature and say you'll do better. But I kind of thought it was hilarious, honestly. Solar then goes on to speculate that Sai is running a conduit behind the curtain and that he choreographed this whole drama. And then that's where we end... Haha, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Chapter 3, Double Keyed Drama. Inspector Preston enters the chat. And he had nothing to do with code violation 312.5c. Inspector Preston was just touring a house. And he saw a code violation, R311.2, a double keyed lock. I know, you have no idea what that is. It's a lock where you need keys for both sides. And he said that he reported it as a code violation because egress doors are not allowed to have double keyed locks. He says, in a zombie apocalypse, in a fire, you don't want to be stuck in the house. You don't want to be searching for a key when you're trying to get out. And there's many more reasons to leave a house than there is to break into one. So while a double keyed lock would for sure be more secure, 
I would also agree that your health is probably more important. So I, I would want to not have a double keyed lock so I can get out in the case of a fire or a zombie apocalypse. Both things could happen. Who knows? Well, you know I looked up code R311.2. And it means that egress doors, which are the main exits of the house, think front door, shouldn't need a key to open from the inside. It's dangerous after all. Scython made a video in response to Preston's video, holding his child for some reason, calling out all of the inspectors, stating that home inspectors need to be held accountable, saying that no, that is not a code violation. We come to find out, yes, Sai is right. It is not in fact a code violation as there is one door that leads out of the house that isn't a double keyed lock. Up to builder's code anyway. As long as there's one door without a double keyed lock, that's fine. That's up to building code. But Preston likes to argue that it's about common sense. And really what an inspector is, is someone who is pointing out things that might actually need to be changed that's important, like mold and cracks in your foundation and whatever else home inspectors look at, I don't know. Preston thought it was a dig at him, so Preston decided to stitch the video. When Preston had stitched the video, unfortunately Sai's child was in it because he was holding said child while saying something like, inspectors need to be held accountable. I wouldn't say that he was encouraging people to stitch him because obviously he probably didn't want people to stitch him with his child's face going around everywhere, but the way he reacted to Paul was just kind of surprising to me. Sai, you put your child on the internet. What do you mean? Oh, I didn't tell you? Well, you see, after Preston called out Sai, immediately Sai decided to deflect. He implied that Preston was sharing Sai's kid's face in a drama video maliciously, which is not what happened. Preston stitched a video with Sai's kid in it, sure, but the focus was not on the kid. It, rather, it was focused more on the fact that Sai said home inspectors need to be held accountable and Preston taking that kind of like personally. Sai's wife had reached out to Preston and asked him to remove the video because she didn't like how popular the video was getting with her child's face on it, which is completely understandable, and Preston claims that he did remove the video. But after removing the video, Sai decided to share some text messages implying that Preston was maliciously sharing his child's face and mocking his child. From what I've seen, Preston didn't say anything about his kid. The kid just happened to be in Sai's video because Sai was holding said child. You can't just hold your child and then be like, you can't stitch this video because my kid's in it. Which, like, yeah, blur the kid's face. Don't, like, you know, nobody should be showing children. But, like, still, like, d don't put your kid in the videos, you know? Preston had also called out Sai for walking on a roof. You shouldn't have to walk on a roof. In fact, you should use a drone because walking on the roof can cause damages to the roof tiles. And then Preston kind of like flexes his numbers, basically being like, you know, I surpassed your numbers in X amount of months when it took you X amount of years. I don't really know why he said that, but okay. <laughs> Following Sai's pros, Preston was receiving threats. <laughs> threats to his life, threats to his livelihood, just general threats everywhere. After Preston shares some of the threats that he received, he says that Sai was maliciously using a comment from a different video and trying to paint a picture like Preston was just being mean and malicious. Preston alleges that Sai used that comment to be intentionally vague so that his audience would come to Sai's defense. Now, if you remember, the drama between Sai and Preston was because Preston had pointed out a double key lock. And you see, Preston decided to take that video and post it in a Facebook group, home inspectors helping home inspectors or something, and asked them if they would report it as a code violation. He says that it was overwhelmingly, yes, it should be reported as a code violation. Which again, we have determined that mm, technically it's not a code violation, so Psy is right, but if you're going from a common sense standpoint, could affect the safety and it could be hazardous to an occupant. So, I mean, you could really just argue about semantics here. But you see, that's not what Preston and Psy did. They didn't stand their ground and argue about their semantics. You know, when they took it to Facebook, and a lot of people had agreed with Preston that they would indeed report the code violation, even some giving several references to R311.2 of the 2015 National Electric Code, which is egress doors shall be readily opened from inside the dwelling without the use of a key, which again, only needs to be one door according to Builder's Code. 
Sai then decided to reach out to all the admins of this Facebook group. Sai pointed out that they weren't acting on rules 1 and 8. He suggested that Preston should be removed for bullying. Preston then makes another video. In Preston's video, he apologizes to Sai for embarrassing him. And then he goes on to say everyone calls out double key locked doors. He then shows us the most absurd hate messages I have ever seen in my life. I really thought Home Inspector TikTok would be wholesome. It is not wholesome. One message read, someone should beat the bleep out of you. And another one said, quote, well, all I can say, you an idiot, keep your business where you at and stay out of my state, dumbass. And then he sent a gif that said, bleep you. It's not funny, funny, but it's just so absurd. You know, over home inspection drama, literally, do you guys remember what this is about? That double keyed lock, a code violation that isn't technically a violation, but I would like to know if there was a double keyed lock in my house that led to the outside that could potentially be a safety hazard. But then again, I am not an inspector. I didn't go to home inspection school, so I really don't know what I'm talking about here. Preston then goes on to say that previously when Sai had to present to the board, Preston stood by Sai's side, despite everything, because he felt the board was trying to infringe on his free speech. The board was allegedly going to suspend Sai's license over some of his TikToks he's made. Preston then alleges that Sai does this often to stir up drama. And Sai notices his numbers grow up more when there's a villain. It was the clip of Sai walking on the roof. It's saying, if I can walk on a roof, I will. And then Preston stitched it and replied, but what happens when you can't? You need a drone. That's what started the beef between them. Besides the double keyed lock that happened two years ago, by the way. And yes, this is just coming up now. I, I'm sorry that I didn't do a whole timeline. I was too busy getting invested into the codes. Um, I read a lot about home inspection codes. Should I become a home inspector? Maybe. If this doesn't work out, I'll inspect your home for money. <laughs> Sai posted a video where he claimed that an out-of-state inspector had reported him to the board. And he left Preston's name on the screen, kind of implying that it was Preston. Preston then goes on in his video to state that he never filed anything, and it wasn't him. And then Preston continues to say that he could catch errors with a drone. And then he talks about the roof pitches in New York where he is, and obviously Arizona has more flat roofs, so I guess you can't walk on a steep roof. I don't know. I don't inspect roofs. Preston then alleges that, like, 99% of inspectors inspect roofs with binoculars. And he's not kidding. After showing his InterNACHI certification, which InterNACHI is the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. Yes, they have their own international association. Preston then continues to say that he advocates for drones. But he'll climb a roof if he needs to. Preston then shows us a message between him and Sai. And unfortunately, it's cut off, so we're missing some context here. I do think it's kind of weird Preston saying to Sai that he could end this and only he can do that and only he can decide that. In the screenshot, Sai alleges that actually everyone agreed with him. Then somebody blocks somebody and they can no longer chat anymore. Preston then praises Sai for calling out shoddy inspectors, but says that he's targeting the wrong people. Then Preston stands on his code violation of the double keyed lock. Yes, he brought it up again. <laughs> Finally, Preston challenged Sai to a home inspector off. That's right. Preston then alleges that Sai inspects new builds only, and Preston inspects old builds. I don't really know why they brought that up, uh, but apparently both have code violations. I feel like new builds shouldn't really have that many code violations considering they're newly built. Maybe they need to update the builder's code. <laughs> Let's start working on that, y'all. Sai then posted on Facebook, alleging that Preston is maliciously mocking his children. As far as I know, the only time Preston shows Sai's child's face is when he stitched his video, which he took down because Sai's wife asked him to. Preston even claims that he blurred the daughter's face, 
and Preston continues to say that the only reason his child was included in the videos was because Sai was holding them. He couldn't just edit around the child. Preston then shares another absurd comment that I just cannot believe someone left of a veteran that commented on one of Sai's videos saying that if Sai wanted him to, he has a clock and he can take care of things because he's a veteran. Preston then calls out Sai for refusing to acknowledge these things. He doesn't even delete the posts. Preston then alleges that Sai refuses to acknowledge the violence. Then Preston shares some new comments that he got ever since Sai released the video, claiming that Preston was maliciously mocking Sai's daughter, which, again, I found no evidence of. Another video of Sai popped up, alleging that two Inner Nachi members filed complaints against him, and one was an out-of-state certified master inspector. Preston then again reiterates that he's not out here making claims against Sai. And he alleges that Sai is actually just twisting the narrative to make it look like he is. Preston then says that he messaged a reputable inspector to mediate a conversation between them. And that he's ready to move on from this double keyed lock drama. Preston posted a video acknowledging a R311.2 double keyed door code violation. Sai stitched said video and said, no, that is in fact not a violation. Then Sai posted a video saying that inspectors should be held accountable while holding his child. Preston stitched the video with an explanation. He blurred the child's face. Sai's wife then reached out to Preston and asked that he take down the video, to which Preston did. And then Sai decided to make up this narrative that Preston was allegedly maliciously mocking Sai's child. His followers got really unalivey commenty out there. Over inspectors, y'all. These are home inspectors. Chapter 4. Sci-Fi, the home inspection guy. Sai starts his video saying that he doesn't want anything to do with Preston. Sai then shares another message from another home inspector, saying that the home inspector wants to promote his business and do a little business deal with Sai. The home inspector mentioned that he was also working with Inspector Preston, to which Sai responded, I don't want any affiliation with Inspector Preston. You'll have to ask him why. Sai then shares messages that he sent to someone, alleging that Preston maliciously mocked his child, which, again, I found no proof of. This person replies, basically saying that, oh my god, Preston did that to my child too. But again, I found no evidence of that. Sai then says he's willing to do a new home inspector challenge, but not with Preston. Then he says that if he wins, he's going to go international. What does that mean? How do you go international as an inspector? Do other countries have different inspection codes? Surely. I don't know. I didn't look into it. Sai then includes text on his video that he's booked out for a whole year and that he offers referrals to inspectors for free. Sai then shares the clip of Preston saying that the double keyed door... <laughs> I can't believe we're still talking about this. <laughs> Sai then shares a clip of Preston saying that the double keyed locked door was not up to code. Sai stitched said video, saying that the door was not an egress door, and was in fact up to code. So Preston's violation was wrong, which again we have determined is true. It was technically not a violation, but inspectors are there for recommendations as well as pointing out safety hazards. Like, a, an inspector's job is to point out safety hazards. So I would argue that I would rather know about a double keyed lock than not know about a double keyed lock. So I don't really think it's that big of a deal that he pointed it out. Uh, what do these code violations even do? Like, if an inspector comes into my house and is just like, hey, you got a double keyed lock here... Uh, that's a code violation, and if you don't replace it, you're going to lose your house. Is that what's going to happen? I, What is the point? I know that home inspectors go in before, like, someone buys a home, obviously. I guess maybe it's that, and they're just like, oh, you don't want to include, like, code violations for that because it's not going to help with sales, but, like, I don't know. It's just very strange. Sai then shows a clip of Ray Klein giving inspector tips. And Inspector Klein says that if a door is an egress door, it cannot have a double-keyed lock. But if it is not an egress door, 
it can indeed have a double keyed lock. Sai and Preston then argue about the double keyed lock and whether it's safe for inspectors to walk on roofs or if they should use drones. Sai then shares a text exchange between him and the admin of the Facebook group that Preston had posted in earlier. In the text exchange, Sai tells the admin that somebody broke rule one and eight, and that means they're supposed to get blocked and booted. Sai then alleges that Preston has an inspector referral program subscription where you can pay him monthly for him to refer you. And Sai does his referrals for free. Now, I put in my notes that that just seemed like a smart business move to me, but no, no, inspectors are not allowed to do that. And we'll touch on this later. This is why there's 33 pages. <laughs> just keep in mind that Sai is alleging that Preston is selling a subscription for referrals. Sai then goes on to explain that he refers people without them knowing because he doesn't need that acknowledgement because he's referring people that are good at their job. Sai then goes on to share a screenshot of the complaint filed against him on the board. The complaint alleges that Sai is harassing an inspector's business. Sai then shares the email, showing that the board allows the public to call in. To me, I felt like he was kind of encouraging his followers to come into the call. Why else would you share the email? What would be the point of sharing the email with that part specifically? But I don't know, that's just allegedly. In the next video, Sai shares a screenshot of another complaint. And in the complaint, it asks if you'll take legal action, to which the person said yes. Sai then writes on the screen, I find this answer interesting because the billion dollar builder said no the first time. Reminder, he doesn't know who sent these complaints in, so it could be two completely different people. But it's interesting that he said that because I thought he was allegedly accusing Preston of sending the complaints in. And as far as I know, Preston doesn't seem like he's a billion dollar building business. In fact, his thing says Inspector Preston, so I would think he's a home inspector and not a billion dollar builder. But what do I know? Sai then shows clips of a bunch of people walking on roofs. And then he shows a bunch of code violations that he found around the property. Sai then posts another video, alleging that two out-of-state Internachi board members are trying to get his license taken away. Which is strange because in the last video, he said it was a billion dollar builder. So is it an Internachi board member? Isn't Internachi strictly for inspectors or is that for builders too? Actually, we're going to look this up right now. Yeah, right. International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. So I find it strange that he said that two out-of-state Internachi board inspectors are filing complaints against him trying to get his license removed when he just said that it was a billion dollar builder doing it. And the Internachi is for inspectors. So is it an inspector filing complaints against you or is it the billion dollar builder? As far as I know, the only complaints that he really talked about were two different ones, which he, again, implied that both of them were from the Billion Dollar Builder, and then he also implied that both of them were from Preston, but Preston is an inspector, so he's not the Billion Dollar Builder. So, Sai, who do you think sent it? You gotta pick one. It can't be both, my guy. It can't be both. Sai then shares clips of what Preston is alleging and clips of the board trial from what I assume is the billion dollar builder representative. What he's showing is that both of them are saying that they've been attacked, threatened, and harassed by his audience, which we know to be true. And I saw the comments of people leaving those kind of comments saying that, you know, they're going to do things to this inspector. So I would say, yeah, that does fall under attacked and harassed. I don't know if Sai should lose his license because his followers might be attacking people, but I do believe that it is important for creators to acknowledge when things are kind of getting out of hand. Sai is clearly seeing these comments on his Facebook posts, on his TikTok, etc., of people saying that they would pop out the glocky on a different inspector that is allegedly filing a complaint, even though he said it was the billion dollar builder, but now he's saying it's the inspector filing the complaint, so I really don't know who is filing the complaint because he keeps saying everybody's filing the complaint against him. Who's filing the complaint? I just think it's important that he should definitely delete those comments and say, hey, it isn't that serious. Like, don't worry about it, dog. But like, put out a statement saying, hey guys, like, 
don't harass these people. Like, it's the least you can do. And considering, I guess, Preston went through it and this billion dollar builder business went through it, I feel like, yeah, he should put out something. Then he points out that both Preston and the billion dollar builder representative bring up the article discussed earlier by Cy, the disgrace of Cy Porter. The case was dismissed and then Cy got to keep his license. Cy then calls for the Internachi to remove the members that filed the false complaints, which, in my opinion, were not false. Especially with Preston, we directly got to see the messages that he got sent from Cy's followers and the messages that he shared from Cy's posts. So I would say that he was threatened and harassed by Cy's audience, which, again, I don't think it's 100% Cy's fault. But I do think that he should at least be like, hey, it's not that serious. You know, it's it's just like the little thing. After that case was dismissed, Cy showed another clip from another board meeting with some dude named Brad arguing that Cy should be punished because their client has received loads of threats. Again, this is the third person doing this. So I do indeed believe that it's his audience threatening them. Why are so many people saying this? I don't think really they're all coming together to get you, Cy. I think it's that your audience is probably sending hate. Just say something, my guy. Just say something. During this board meeting, a couple of Cy's followers decided to join it, and they called in just to boo the plaintiff when he finished his spiel. And then they're like wooing and praising Cy like they know him personally or something. It's really strange, actually. 001 and 003, uh, Cyril Porter. Set him free! Cy Porter is the best inspector you have in Arizona. But again, I feel like this is a great example of weaponizing his audience. Cy posted a video specifically showing that his followers can call into the board meeting. Now, he didn't say they should speak on his behalf or boo the plaintiff. I'll give him that. He didn't say that. But that is what happened. Even if Cy didn't tell them explicitly to do that, by not acknowledging it and saying, hey guys, you know, a little unprofessional or something, because these are real people's jobs. Inspectors are real jobs. Like, these are real professionals. He should have just said something, I feel like. Regardless of whether the plaintiff was right or wrong, no one should be receiving threats of violence. That's the thing about having a large, devoted audience. While you're not responsible for all of their actions, you are responsible for encouraging or condemning their actions. When you receive comments like this one, the least you could do is say, it's not that serious. Sai, even if you're not directly telling your audience to attack other people, I think it's important that you say something to your audience and tell them that it's really not that serious. Otherwise, silence can be seen as condoning it, and it will just progressively get worse. But maybe that's the audience you're striving for. Chapter 5, Inspectors Inspecting Inspectors. In one of the complaints that Sai received, the inspector says that Sai shouldn't use his large audience to publicly call out builders, and that reports should be made to the home inspection client exclusively. Now, before we let Sai tell us his side and what he thinks about it, I went and looked up the code of ethics for the inspectors. According to homeinspector.org code of ethics, which again is in the description. 2C says, inspectors shall not disclose inspection results or client information without client approval. And then according to the Nachi Code of Ethics, number seven says, the inter Nachi member shall not release any information about the inspector or the client to a third party unless doing so is necessary to protect the safety of others or both of the following conditions are met. The client has been made explicitly aware of what information will be released to whom and for what purpose and the client has provided explicit prior written consent for the release of their information. Now that we all know sharing information without client approval is in fact against the code of ethics. We don't know for a fact if these inspectors did or did not ask for consent, so I'm going to give them a benefit of the doubt and say that it's in their contract or something. Hopefully. <laughs> if it's not, you guys should add that real quick. <laughs> and to that point, if Psy as well as any other inspectors caught doing it, did not get written approval. They are all in breach of Article 2C, the Home Inspector Code of Ethics, or number seven of the inter -Nachi Code of Ethics. I'm going to assume that it's in their contract, and they all 100% 
got permission from their clients to share code violations that they found in their homes. The complaint continues to say that Sai is an instigator, not a solution finder. The complaint continues to also say that Sai called out builders and allegedly doxed the complainty, causing a bunch of backlash from Sai's followers. Sai then goes on to explain that his video went viral and he's calling out builders and they don't like it. Sai's story did in fact go viral with an article posted on ABC News. A home inspector has gone viral for his videos. Now a home builder is trying to stop him from posting them. I thought he was saying it was two inspectors that were making the complaints. I thought he only had two complaints. Am I missing something? ABC News then goes on to share clips from Sai's TikTok page, and then they interview him. Sai says that he posts his videos for an educational tool for the public, because even new homes need inspections, and the public should know what inspections are. Amen to that, brother. When making a large purchase, everything should be inspected by a qualified inspector. And I'm so glad that the people paying for your services allow you to share the code violations that you find so that way you can continue educating the public. The news clip then goes on to state that the Billion Dollar Builder is the largest home building company in the country, and that they filed a complaint against Sai with the Arizona Board of Technical Registration that regulates home inspectors. The complaint alleges doxing, harassing, threats of violence, etc. One of the interesting things about the video was Sai saying that their biggest complaint was... Sai then says that their biggest complaint was a viral video of Sai finding a gas meter leaking gas. So he decided to put a lighter up to it and light it? No joke, that's what he says in the interview. Why would you do that? Wouldn't it explode? Well, I looked for this video and I couldn't find it. I actually spent like maybe 30 minutes looking for it and I was just like, I'm moving on. I can't, I can't do this. It doesn't even matter in the long run, but I couldn't find it. But I did find a video where he was dumping like a liquid on top of like a gas meter and it started to bubble, which I guess is also a sign of leaking gas. So I think it's kind of weird that he said he lit a lighter and made a little explosion and stuff if that didn't happen and it was just the water thing. And also, like, I thought the news channel would show that clip, but they didn't even show the clip. They showed the bubbling. So I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. I also think it's funny that he said that that was their biggest complaint when all of the complaints that he did show, nobody mentioned anything about a gas meter. And it was mostly focused on harassment, doxing, and even allegations of suggestive comments made to women. The news article had reached out to the biggest builder company, and they said that they don't have any issues with size home inspecting TikToks. But they do have issues with him violating professional conduct standards. And Sai's response to that was, they agree with the inspections, they just don't like the social media part. Which is probably true. I'm sure that they don't like the social media part. But as long as Sai got permission from his clients to share all of these code violations, it doesn't really matter. And he's not really breaking any code of conduct by doing that. Now, the harassing and stuff, maybe, but focusing strictly on the fact that he's saying that they're mad that he, they're sharing, like, violations and stuff, like, I think it's important for the builder company to, hey, be like, yo, we need to stop doing that, you know? So I appreciate that size going around and sharing all of these issues and code violations that he finds, and, of course, with consent of the owners of said home with said code violations. Sai then shares a Facebook post of someone alleging that Sai is damaging the home inspection industry, which could be a violation of Article 1-2 in the Nachi.org Code of Ethics. I would argue that it really isn't damaging the home inspection industry, and here in America we also have like free speech and all that, but what do I know? Sai then shares the comments from the Facebook post where a bunch of users are insulting social media inspectors. The reason Sai brings up these comments is because he's trying to show that the users are violating the Facebook group's rules, especially one that's allegedly, don't be rude or you'll get banned. <laughs> Sai then alleges that the admin that he had reached out to reached out to Preston, stating that Sai was trying to get him banned. In my opinion, that's not necessarily a lie, Sai, you did kind of try to get them banned. Pointing out rule one and eight saying that, hey, they're supposed to be blocked and booted is kind of trying to get them banned, in my opinion, allegedly. I mean, he did in fact reach out to the admin complaining about said rules. 
a very get the manager move, if you will. Chapter six, slander, standards, and social media. Side continues reading H124-003. The complaint alleges that a realtor asked for this home inspection company to do the same inspections that Psy does, and that the company considers the inspections unorthodox and even damaging. After declining, the realtor reached out to Psy, saying that they won't do it. Psy then goes on a rant about how all home inspectors should use thermal imaging and should also test for tile shower flooding. I guess those were the two things that the company refused to do. Which is interesting because later down the line they said that they do do those, but you know. Sai then shares a video of him doing a tile shower test where he floods a bathroom and then water gets under the carpet in the next room. He lifts the carpet and shows it damaging the wood. If you're wondering what a tile flood test is, it's when you clog the drain and then let the water run for 10 to 15 minutes. And according to the nachi.org forum, Sai is right. Most inspectors don't do tile shower tests, as it should be done before the shower is finished installing. It's not a requirement for home inspectors to do. And I would agree that it seems to cause some damage. But I wasn't able to find any more information about flood testing. Sai shares the text message with us from the client asking Sai to do the home inspection, saying that the company won't do it. And the client alleges that the company said that Sai will lose his license if he continues doing those unorthodox texts. Sai then shares a video showing the importance of thermal imaging. You can see water leaking from the shower, leaking from the ceiling, and into a closet. And it shows on the little thermal image thing because it's blue versus green or red. Water, you know? I don't know. It does kind of seem important, this tile flood test, but I think it should be done before the house is finished being built um, because I could see how it would damage property. Especially when I watched Sai flood that tile and then he lifted up that carpet and I'm like, ooh, well, how, how are you going to dry that wood? Like now that wood is just going to like the, the carpet above the wood is wet. Like how does he did he bring in a dry vac? Not everybody has a shop vac. Not everybody has a carpet shampooer. They should, but not everybody does. Did he was he just like put down some towels and everything's good? I'm just I'm just I'm just, you know, thinking off the top of the dome here. <laughs> Sai then says that the company alleged that Sai caused them to lose business, which this could be true. They are indeed in the same state. However, there is a possibility that everyone who saw the posts isn't going to hire a home inspector. In this economy, you're going to buy a house? I don't think so. We really have no way to tell. I would say that watching him do the thermal imaging does make me want to get an inspector that does thermal imaging. It seems kind of important. The tile shower flood thing, I could probably do without. It seems like it would cause more damage, and I would kind of be mad about someone flooding my bathroom. I feel like there's surely other ways to test that, right? So I'll stand by no tile shower flooding testing. But thermal imaging, I'm with you there, Sai. Ew, that should be standard. I don't know why that's not standard. It's very strange because I feel like thermal imaging would be really good at finding a whole bunch of things, like whether like the AC is not getting cold enough in like a certain corner. I mean, I don't know what they expect. I don't know what they inspect, okay? I don't know if they inspect ACs. I don't know. Like, I mean, I bet if you go up to my attic right now, it is very hot in there. So they probably need a thermal thing to inspect in there. I don't know. But I do agree that thermal imaging does sound important important, so I'm with you there, dog. Sai then shares a clip from a board meeting where they called out an inspector for paying $60,000 for what he called a business promotion. Sai then shares a clip of Mark Cohen, the Internachi general counselor, stating that inspections should be done properly, not for financial incentive. That means that inspectors should include all code violations they find and not accept money from realtors saying, hey, you know, let the the fact that the outlet's crooked slip by. It's the code inspector's job to find the code violations, so he's got to share them with the client. Sai then shares Arizona Code Chapter 30, Article C1, which states that pay-to-play programs are strictly prohibited. Examples can include preferred vendor, approved vendor, marketing service agreements, etc. So I guess Sai shared this clip to show that that inspector was paying people to refer business to them. But I'm unsure if that's someone that is filing a complaint against Sai or if that was just another person. 
Now, I know you're wondering, well, what about promoting our business? What about free speech? Well, the reason that no payment for referrals exists is to ensure unbiased referrals. Sai is correct that the sky is allegedly violating Title IV, Chapter 30, Rule C1, which clearly states that inspectors cannot pay for referrals. Sai then states that home inspecting is about protecting the public and advertising via preferred vendors is just allowing biased referrals. As I mentioned earlier, if what Sai is saying is true when he alleged that Preston is charging a monthly subscription fee to refer other inspectors, he is indeed violating Article 4, Chapter 30, Rule C1. Because an inspector subscription fee is just that, paying to refer an inspector. And in any circumstance, it seems that it's prohibited in all of the codes. Sai then goes on saying that the board should do an investigation on that, and I wholeheartedly agree. Sai then continues saying that he wants to work with national inspectors to find and dismantle any pay-to-play referrals that are allegedly happening everywhere. We end the story on October 29th, 2024. Psych! Sai brought up another home inspector, and this guy's from Florida. Chapter 7, Mizelle in the Mix. And you know I'm listening to his side, baby. Sai alleged that this inspector posted a 12-minute video where they admitted to making false accusations. And then he shares this clip from Mizell Home Inspections. I actually found the video that he shared, and it was only 3 minutes and 44 seconds long. I went looking through the page, and I couldn't find a 12-minute long video. In Mizell's video, he comes in hot. He says he wants to talk about the inspector side of things from an inspector's perspective, an expective, if you will. <laughs> Mazel briefly explains the double-keyed lock drama that we discussed earlier. Just a reminder, Preston called out a code violation for an exterior door having a double-keyed lock. Mazel says that Preston is acknowledging a safety hazard and alleges that Psy is implying that Preston is an alarmist because it's not a code issue. Mazel goes on to say that if you're looking at builder's code, Sai is correct. The only egress door that matters in builder's code is the front door. And as long as you have one door to the outside that isn't a double keyed lock, you're fine. He says he's not a code inspector. He's a home inspector. And as home inspectors, our job is to protect the public, protect the public's safety. He gives recommendations. He then explains a few situations where a double keyed lock would be a hazard and then explains that according to the law, the door in the back is allowed to have a double keyed lock on it. And there's a benefit for having a double keyed lock. They're more secure, but there are more reasons to run out of a house than there are to break in one. So it just makes sense for a home inspector to acknowledge it and tell their client. He finishes his video with a, that door is not a code violation, but I recommend you change the lock. And just as quickly as he entered, he exits. Conclusion. Is it over? Sai's cases were all dropped, and he got to keep his license. And this whole thing kind of finished off very anticlimactically. I haven't seen the outside in days, so I'm going to go touch some grass. Maybe tomorrow morning. I'll see you later. Bye, guys. All right, you just need to secure these wires, and I recommend replacing that lock, and your house will be completely up to code. I'll bet this was the easiest inspection you've ever done. You have no idea.